Now we go outside again, if you please. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said unto the Jews, the religious rulers now, Behold your king. And friends, you are seeing him now being delivered actually into the hands of sinful men, both religious and political. And you're seeing what the death of Christ was to the world. And I'd like for you to notice this. The death of the Lord Jesus can be viewed from several different viewpoints, by the way. From the standpoint of God, the cross was a propitiation. That is, it was a mercy seat where God can extend mercy to you and me. It was where full satisfaction was made so that a holy God and a righteous God could reach down and save sinners. And the very judgment throne of God becomes a mercy seat where you and I can find mercy and we ought not to find it because we're guilty. But he bore our guilt. Now... From the standpoint of the Lord Jesus himself, he's the Savior. And it was a sacrifice. It was a sweet-smelling savor, you see. And he made himself an offering, an offering to sin. And it was an act of obedience, too, by the way, because Paul in Philippians says he became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, from the standpoint of you and of me who are believers, it was a substitution. He took my place. He took your place. He was the one who was sinless. He was suffering for the sinner. He was the one who was just suffering for the unjust. And he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, might live unto righteousness." Now, from the standpoint of Satan, it was a triumph and also a defeat because it was a triumph way back to Genesis 3.15 where now the heel of the woman's seed, you see, is now being bruised. But it's going to be a defeat because the head of the serpent is yet to be crushed. He's going to destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. Now, from the standpoint of the world outside, and you hear this argued, and unfortunately, the church looks at it this way today. It was nothing in the world but a brutal murder. That's the way John is presenting it, by the way, to us at this particular point. It's nothing in the world but a brutal murder, my friends, that we have before us. They kill the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, is what Peter said you remember. Now, that's what we're seeing in this particular section here. So will you notice? They cried out, away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. That is the thing that they're saying here. And that reminds us of Matthew 27, verse 24, when Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made. He took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this just person, see ye to it. But it's also ironical that the oldest creed of the church says, crucified under Pontius Pilate, he couldn't wash his hands. 